JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 12th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against most of uh, the other major currencies yesterday and today in Asia, actually against all but one. It gained notably against GBP, AUD, and then ZD in that order, while it decked out less gains versus the Euro, the Swiss franc, and the Canadian dollar. The only currency against which the greenback slid is, um, was the Japanese, uh, the Japanese yen. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar and the yen, combined with the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi, suggests that investors' appetite deteriorated at some point yesterday or today in Asia. Indeed, looking at the performance uh, in the equity world, we see that um, European shares gained, Wall Street came under selling interest, with the selling excuse me, rolling over excuse me, rolling over into the Asian session today. Like yesterday, we believe that the further recovery in European equities was due to bargain hunters trying to take advantage of uh, the lower prices. We stick to our guns that the fundamentals suggests uh, that there is still more room to the downside and that view was enhanced after the US CPIs came in above their forecasts, forcing US investors to sell stocks. Now, although inflation still slowed, the fact that it came above its forecasts adds credence to the view that the Fed may need to continue tightening at a fast pace. Yes, investors did not brought back bets with regards to a 75 basis points hike at one of the upcoming gatherings, at one of the upcoming Fed gatherings, but they remained convinced that uh, 50 basis points increments are well on the table. According to the CME FedWatch tool, 250 basis points hikes for June and July are fully priced in. This suggests that the Fed remains among the most, if not the most hoggish uh, major central bank, and that's why we expect the greenback to extend its prevailing uptrend for a while more. We do expect it to outperform, to outperform currencies, the central banks of which are expected to proceed with um, tightening at a much slower pace or stay ultra loose like uh, the Bank of Japan. The Bank of Japan stance was highlighted and confirmed again by the summary of opinions from the latest meeting released overnight. However, <clears throat> with uh, worries and concerns over global growth increasing notably recently, we see the case for the yen to continue receiving some support due to its safe haven status. And with the risk linked currencies Aussie and Kiwi feeling the heat of risk aversion, we believe that Aussie yen and Kiwi yen may slide, may slide more, regardless of monetary policy. Even dollar yen, which we expect to rebound and keep drifting north, could see a small setback. Here, though, due to both the dollar and the yen acting as safe havens, we believe that monetary policy divergence will be the main driver. Now, as for exploiting further US, uh, USD strength, we believe that it would be better to do it against, um, uh, against the Euro and the Pound, because both the ECB and the Bank of England are expected to proceed relatively slow in terms of tightening. Today, we got the first estimate of the UK GDP for the first quarter, which came in below estimates, and the business investment for the quarter, which contracted. In our view, this adds to the risks over a recession uh, in the UK economy next year and adds to the narrative um, that the Bank of England may slow down its hiking process due to that. 
The greenback could also keep outperforming the Aussie and the Kiwi, which are now vulnerable due to the global growth concerns. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook uh, webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye. Have a great day. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.